Aguten Chodesh, Moirav Rabbi Yisrael Aguten Chodesh. To borrow something, Chachma Begoyim Taimin, to borrow a, a famous literary sentence from Charles Dickens, probably, perhaps, no Oyev Yisrael. But he says, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And that's what we find ourselves in now. I'm making this Thursday evening, Friday morning, late at, day, late at night, where after I did my radio program live, I took Hamidia and I was looking through the weekly Hamidia, and I want to comment on an article. But I want to give a preface. On my program, I discussed this concept, the best of times, the worst of times, meaning we're in a terrible age. We've lost G'daylim and Tzadikim. Others are in pain. Hundreds and hundreds of Yidin are in physical pain now, and maybe many tens are in hospitals, and many have been nifta. Esau Yaakov, internationally, we never had a threat throughout the entire history that all of Klal Yisrael was threatened since the time of Purim. And there was come out never such a time that nobody, even in the time of Purim, Mordechai got together with thousands of Tamidim. They were allowed to have Tvila B'tzibur. So this is the worst of times. It's the Sakon, etc. But it's the best of times because for everything we jujitsu, J-E-W, we flip it over. The very Koyach of the Ra flips over to good. That's the Mice of Machtes HaShekel. Machtes HaShekel, the, the Tanchum explains, is because there were Shisha Gramitin. The Shisha Gramitin is what makes up the correct weight of the Machtes HaShekel biblically. And that's based on Ki Boishesh Moshe. It was a tikkun of the Cheto Egel where Boishesh Moshe, a play on the words. Okay, so you see the Tanchum says how much Hashem loves us. That from the very worst sin, the Cheto Egel is the second worst sin in the history of mankind after the Chet of Odom Harish Nechava. It's the redux of that. And yet from that comes that Machzis HaShekel, which is so dehoibed, which is so exalted. So I want to say it's the best of times, the worst of times. And our hope is that when we come out of this catastrophe, very, very soon, Bikar of Mamish, Gich, with HaChodesh Hazer, with the new Chodesh, we come out, there'll be changes. We won't talk in Shul and Davening. We won't speed race the Davening. We won't have luxurious, conspicuous consumption, freserai fests of Kedeshim and Simchas that will take place in our Shul's ballrooms. The ladies won't congregate in such a way, not sneeze and dress to the T's, attracting attention and fashmek of it with perfume. And with very long shekels, I'm sorry to say, but it's halachically impermissible. So, but what is the purpose of this of this discussion that we're having today? So we have to hold up our fingers to see which way the wind is blowing. Do we see that there's going to be changes? We see that many are signing on to no talking and shul. But I'm hoping, by the way, that there should be a website called 100K Kabbalos. That 100,000 people should make individual Kabbalists from Kabbalists from Tinekeshe Beis Rabban and on to adults. And by doing that, it will be like the Torahs will be pleasing to Kodesh Baruch when something great can come out. But let me not get sidetracked. The question is, do we see a harbinger of what's going to be? And it's going to be big improvement? Or after the malaria drug in Mirza Hashem helps, the anti-malaria drug is going to be business as usual. Shoo, we escaped, we'll forget about it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. I was shocked and horrified and, and, and thankful. I was thankful for my shock and horror when I saw some pictures from Yeshiva World News of, of Levaya, and then underneath it said five years to the day over the Sassoon tragedy. And I said to myself, my goodness, we're playing the Dalma Kula, so many children were lost. How do we forget? How do we forget? We become news junkies. Today's news, tomorrow's forgotten. The tragedy of unparalleled proportions, so many children in Nifta. You understand? You understand, we have to take things to heart and keep on it and focus on it. So unfortunately, I see a harbinger. It's going to be business as usual, and I want to make a tremendous protest, and I want to share this with you because, Rabbi Sai, if YouTube had that you would be able to smell, to stink the zayfil, I just saw in Iran, they thought that by smelling certain things that they could cure themselves of the virus through their... Uh, through the, the process of breathing, of respiration. So they smelled it, 300 people died, 1,000 people are sick. So, 
to schmeckt gefährlich, Rabbi Said. This is this is Hamidia, the paper that you can bring into your house that you don't. That that's their theme. You don't have to be embarrassed to bring it to your house. You don't have to be embarrassed. This stinks. I'm sorry to speak so coarse, but listen to the smells. Listen and hear the smell. The title of this, on page 14 of the weekend edition of Hamidia, is Dun -da -dun -da -dun -da -dun -dun -da -dun -da -da -dun Rabbi. Yechiel Kalish loses primary bid for Illinois' legislature. We have to give credit to the person who wrote this Hanifa piece, this puff piece, this yellow journalism, this one-sided propaganda that even in, in Russia they couldn't do a better propaganda job. In China, Rafal Hoffman, I don't know if he was responsible for the title or if we have to give credit to Mrs. Ruth Lichtenstein or some other people in, in, in uh, Hamaidia town. What's up as rabbi? Thus, Epis Rabbi, in other words, he's out there. We can immediately make him back into a rabbi again. If the Dechilul Hashem's in every aspect of what Kalish did, every aspect from the dirty deal he made with Lu Lang. So I'm going to explain this to you. It's going to take a little time, but I'm going to explain it to you, that you should understand the garbage. You can understand why you can't trust Jewish media, that the biggest propagandists that can rival CNN in their slant, in their spin, in their attempts to play mind games with you. So thank you, Rufal Hoffman. Now, he was Mark Kalish. Of course, they tout him as the first rabbi in the in, in the Illinois legislature, and maybe in all the United States. Hashem. Let me let's go back. Let me let me read the article, thing, then you'll see. Let's go through. Let me teach you how to read yellow journalism. Rabbi Yechiel Kalish was defeated. By a quote unquote progressive challenger. No, he wasn't, by the way. Hashkaf was, he was defeated by a Kodesh Baruch Hu who had enough. The same Kodesh Baruch Hu who said, I'm not happy with you in the shul, said, I'm not happy, Kalish, with your doing in the legislature. Out you go. Our prayers were answered. The Chil Hashem has to stop. Hashem had enough. That's what a Torah paper should say. The progressive beat him? Or Hashem decided he didn't want him in there? Think about it. Deep thought for Hamidiyah. His brief time in office was marked, listen, by successful efforts to preserve the state's school choice program to aid the healthcare industry. Let me interpret to you what that means. School choice means that he's pushing for gelt, 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 which is a good thing. Parenthetically, the more money they get from the government for school choice, tell me, do you think that's going to reduce tuitions? You really think it's going to do that? Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. You think that you're going to get the money in your pockets. I'm not going to even get into that. I'm not saying we shouldn't fight for it. But let's understand who's getting the money. It's not going to be in you. The tuitions, my dear friends, will rise. So it's gelt, 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 but we think shit is stick, superficial. Okay, we got it. Money. Next. Let's guess. What's the second thing that he accomplished after the gelt of, of, of the, the Sima Senayim, the blinding of the average Jew? Oh, oh, we're suffering from the tuition crisis. So they're always going to get you. trying to get. Oh, it's trying good. Everything is for effort. Even if you think into it deeply, you'll understand these issues will just raise the tuitions, mostly. Or if you get $2,000 a kid, I guarantee you the yeshivas will take $1,500 in raised tuitions, and you'll make $500. You'll get a pittance. You'll get the same breadcrumbs that we're selling out, the same Esnan, Zoyn, and Mechir, Keller, Gelt, that we sell out for, for all the things until now with, with the yeshivas, that we have to vote for all the low-life politicians that will have our good to be Maramas for us to vote for, like Cuomo, who made same-gender marriage. And, 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 and Bennett was busy telling a hot school of Bennett, we got to vote for him because the other one's much worse. He's much more progressive. Yeah, I understand? We have to reward him. Okay, let's go vital. Let's say you read. The second thing is, he's saying the healthcare industry. Let me explain to you what the healthcare industry means. That he, They write an article, many people in Chicago. I challenge Hamadiyah to tell us exactly how many people in Chicago make their parnasa, the plain common people, you know, the you and me people, make their parnasa from the healthcare industry, which means nursing homes. That's what it means, okay? Okay? The answer is there are half a dozen people, 10 people, 20 people who are Gavirim, Adirim from nursing homes. Fine. They give to the doctor and everything. That's very nice. But let's not exaggerate. Let's not call the healthcare and we this. And like this, in other words, let me explain to you. He was getting his bread buttered as a lobbyist from healthcare. And the first thing he did days after he got in was he introduced healthcare. It was, it, there would be one person working 
in healthcare, a stam year making his fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars as a hired help, etc. And I don't know how many. I'm sure there are some in the administration. There are 20, 40, 60, 100. How many thousands of Jews are there? Erlich Haredisha Orthodox Jews there in 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 in, in uh, like in Chicago. It makes it like it seems such a vital thing, you know. If it wasn't for Yechiel Kalis supporting the healthcare industry. I have people with moms be unemployed. Skifella, Hosanna, Hoshia, no, it's Givaldic. You understand? They're taking us for idiots. All right? So, it, it, let me explain to you. Yechiel Kalish would be doing the same thing for healthcare if there wasn't one Orthodox Jew besides the administrator owners. You know why? Because he was a lobbyist for many years, and he got a lot of money in all kinds of ways, and he just continued that when he got in. So that becomes the most important thing. And it's supposed to be spun in a way that you're supposed to think this is for your table. Why? Because like this, they can give money to tzedakah. I have to agree. There's one person in the, in the healthcare industry, Achav, I went to Yeshiva with, and a few times on occasion when I made class of the kids, he threw me $500 for which I love him very, very, I thank you very much. I think he would have done it without Kalish's involvement, whether Kalish lobbied for him or he got the bill or not. Just don't tell anybody. Thank you, Heshi. Anyhow, here's the deal. Let's go further. This is a learning experience where I wouldn't be staying up so late early in the morning. Then he says this, you know, thank you, Baruch Hashem, for giving me the opportunity. Now, here we go. Rabbi Kellish was appointed to fill the seat by a board of three Democratic Party leaders last January after longtime representative Lou Lang announced his resignation. Mr. Lang himself was one of the three who chose him and initially the support of the local Democratic Party organization. Now, let me remind you what happened. Lou Lang was in a scandal and he had to retire or he risked being defeated in the next election or in a primary. So there are talk, there was talk, and there was even a newspaper article of the North Cook County written by a, a man named Kennedy who did several articles that an insider told him, who he wouldn't reveal the source in the Orthodox community, that there was a deal struck between Mr. Lang and Kalish. Kalish, a longtime lobbyist for Agudis Yisrael, their chief lobbyist, okay? And the deal was basically Lang was going to become a lobbyist. Kalish was going to go to Springfield to take over a seat. And everybody was going to lick a bangle. And Kalish was starting on his career to be first this and then a state senator and ultimately a congressman. And you understand and to save Doshano, to save the Jewish community. It was a a dirty sort of deal because the other Jew was a guy named Ira, Ira Silverstein, I think, or something like that, who also had to resign in disgrace. Some kind of mice, he was speaking inappropriately with a lady and texting her, whatever it was. Ira Silverstein was the, was the alderman, which is like a city councilman. And then there was a third guy, a Gentile, I think. Now, Lang was the most powerful, and Lang was a powerful member of the Democratic Party. So basically, Silverstein, who wanted a judgeship of this and that, so he gave his vote. These three people would appoint, Kellish wasn't voted for, to appoint the next person. So it was said very clearly. They went through a, a, a fake thing where on one Sunday they interviewed 20 different people, and boy, be on that Sunday, by 7 or 8 o'clock at night, they already were swearing in Mr., I mean, Rabbi Mark Yechiel Kellish. It was a dirty deal that was cut. You understand? I'm not even getting into that. That, that was a chil Hashem, the way it was done. It was in the papers. And a lot of politicals know that. Lang had the power. And, the, and guess what? When they three voted, they gave the votes to Lang. So they didn't even stay for all the interviews with the people. They just packed out after a certain amount of nominal time. They say, here, Lang, okay, we're giving you over by proxy our votes. And Lang, Lang appointed him 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Ashri Yezhi Secha. So it was a dirty deal on that. What did Kalish do next? Within the next day or two, he was it was somewhere around January 20th, January 21st on the Sunday, either Monday or Tuesday was the anniversary of Roe versus Wade. The first thing Kalish did was he gave interviews to the papers, to the Chicago Sun-Times, the Chicago Tribune, the Jewish Telegraphic Agency, and Politico, all in the course of four days. And he immediately said to them clearly, I'm going to support homosexual marriage. It's the law of the land. I'm a foot soldier in, in, in terms of abortion, a woman's right to choose. He used all these things. And Lang told one of the newspapers, I would have never, ever given over my seat to Kalish if there was one little crack 
a difference between us on the social issues. He might come from an orthodox thing, he said, he praised. So he said this. He said this clear that there was a deal and Kalish opened his mouth to all this media and basically indicated the same thing that Lang said. And he never retracted and he never contradicted because I promise you, like I'm here, that it's true that he did those things. He made those dirty deals. And to prove it, the first thing he did a day or two after being appointed was he ran to Planned Parenthood, the abortion rights him, the biggest group of abortionists, where Governor Pritzker was celebrating killing babies and a bill that he was about to pass, which passed in this last uh, segment, in this last session, that was one considered by the media, the secular media, one of the most advanced, quote unquote, progressive, all-inclusive abortion bills up to the moment of, of, of delivery. And I think it also is like New York's, that it withholds treatment from a baby that survived an abort, an, a botched abortion. I think so. But it's horrific ritzicha. Okay? Then he gets up. The first thing he does, as I said, when he gets to Springfield is, he, uh, what he does is he, uh, he introduces a bill about noise and homes for Gelt Gelt to show his, his, his supporters where his bread is buttered. By the way, do you know another big client of Rabbi Mark Kalish? Rabbi Yechiel, the lobbyist for 16 years, the one who's Mishores, Rev. Avram Chaim Levin, the one who told people after this scandal that he was going to have, and he even sent it out in the tweet to his supporters, I now have a personal goggle that I'm going to be consulting with on everything. This is what he said. I'm just reporting what he said. He said the Novin Minsk Rebbe, he said, and he's very good, the Novin Minsk Rebbe, because, ha, 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 it's like being cutesy. He, he, he went to college and he has a degree of political science where he understands politics, something like that. In other words, his inference was that, I mean, these other Rabbanim, they don't even know, but I have somebody who really was states of politics, a college grad and everything else. And the whole thing is a busha. This is Seichel. This is your sophisticated lobbyist. It's disparaging to the government's Rebbe. Okay, so anyhow, and then he claimed to somebody, Saul from Flatbush spoke to him, and he claimed that even though he sent out his letter to his, to his supporters because he was facing a lot of problems, and one of the problems he was facing was I had an article in the Jewish press right away that Kalish has to resign because of the disgusting things he did, and I quoted what he did in the Jewish press article, and you can find it in January of 1990, of 2019. You can look up the Jewish press, Yechiel Kalish should survive, Mark Yechiel Kalish, or Mark Kalish should survive, something like a should resign. So he was under some pressure. So he sent out that he's going to be retracting, he's going to be doing something. And then all of a sudden, he says he he says instead that he he, he now was mishabbing himself to the Novman Skurebba, and then we never heard any more about that. And then he tells Saul from Flatbush on a phone conversation, he tells him that uh, he was told by his advisor, then he didn't say it was a Novman he said he's a rabbinic advisor, this will blow over, don't, don't do anything, etc., etc. I don't know if it's true or not, it's Tari Hibulimon and Nisarach, I wish if it was true, if it wasn't true, that some God should explain to us what was the Cheshwam to tell him not to attract in public, etc., etc. Meanwhile, Agudah Sishol continued to keep him as an officer, but we made enough of a tumult about it, it became embarrassing, so they used the fig leaf, they wouldn't say, they wouldn't come out and, 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 and disassociate themselves with him in the statement, I go to show. This is the Frankenstein anti morality monster we created that we, with the errant Rabbi Shera doctrine, that you got to turn the other cheek to the immorality, as it says in the Rabbi Shera authenticated biography that was airbrushed by Art School and by Jonathan Rosenwood. Says there, Clark, in the chapter about morality, that Rabbi Shera Shita and it's quoted Solos, who I ran against, said it, and Schumer said it. That we agreed to disagree, and Rabbi Sherman never discussed it. Rabbi Sherman had a shita. His shita was, we got to do for Klag Yisrael. We got to turn the other chip to the politicians. That's why we have assisted suicide piercing in New Jersey. That's why we have homosexual marriage piercing in New York, which impacted on the uh, on the state legislature. That's that's why we have all these things. Okay, understand? So, Aguda never disassociated himself, and it took them weeks until... They took him off. You see, after he was the chief lobbyist for something like 14 years, a long time, a long time, over 10 years. I think it was 14 years, something like that. Uh, at a certain point, he went into business for himself and he started to make the real money. He was representing gambling interests and nursing homes, you understand? And the Yeshiva's Tari Masaira 
and term server and any other, they didn't bother them that he's also representing gambling interests. Well, they didn't know because Teres Hashem Achim especially said, I want someone left to ask who else? Isn't it a little embarrassment? What if he would be getting paid money by a Hollywood industry? Would Teres also feel comfortable gambling? Gambling causes addiction of gambling. It causes alcoholism. It causes depression. It breaks down families. It promotes usually schmutzige activities. You understand what I'm even yavin. Okay? This is what we're talking about. Now, so after a certain amount of weeks, Aguda used the excuse that they had kicked him upstairs when he became a lobbyist and left him. They made him a member of the Board of Trustees. They gave him some kind of chosh of a title. So now it was it was, it was was smelly. You ready? You can smell the smell through the YouTube, no? So uh, so they said, Aguda said, you know what? You know what? We have to take him off because he's, he has a political office. He can't be an uh, officer or trustee. But not Chasvish on the he should chastise them or they should feel in public that they have to disassociate from them. And the lecker I continues, the reconstitution, the rehabilitation, the reinstallation of Kalish that should be Muksa Machmas Mias is now introduced back into the mainstream of of of, of uh, establishment Haredi Klaal Yisrael to their media, and this is step one, calling him Rabbi Kalish and Hosannas, like he's a great hero, you know. You understand? It's very very lucky that we're all in uh, quarantine now, or for sure, the nursing home people and their buddies, maybe from the gambling things, were sponsoring a few Orthodox schools like they did in the past, Kedeshim to lord him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's 11, what's so terrible? Okay, he did that, but what did he do so terrible in the legislature? What did he do? Let me tell you what he did. When there was a bill to force feed forcibly throughout all the grades in public schools, children that they have to learn the whole Mishkav Zacha agenda, the whole LBTQ agenda to be brainwashed. Now, who else are public schools? The Jewish kids go, yeah, but they're not Yidin. This isn't the Goyim, the kids. This isn't the Nishkin from Yidin. You saw Lafa Pichachata. At the worst, and there's not even enough of each other. There might be Tinakish and Nishbu that our good this would reach out to them in different programs, Jep and this and that, and our good the programs. You have to be Makabra Haikim. All of a sudden, we can throw them to the wind. We can have them brainwashed to grow up to be homosexualists, to be good, to mean to, in other words, to, to hold from this whole Khazarai. You understand? The point is meaning. No disrespect for that agenda, but they should be no disrespect for our religious agenda. We're not making fun of people who have this inclination. We're saying that it's anathema to Orthodox Jews. And it's anathema to Orthodox Jews, just like in Greenwich Village, they could expect that their representatives will not vote for religious freedom over their so-called rights and what they want, their agenda, transgender bathrooms, everything else respectfully but firmly, we have the right to advocate for our Torah biblical values, and that should be a nethra to us, and it should be a nethra to, to Kalish, even if he wasn't an Aguda long-term lobbyist. He voted for that bill. That bill brainwashes Jewish children, it force-feeds them, things that are antithetical to the Jewish faith, and frankly, those to the Christian faith, and Christians are also Noahites who are obligated, according to our Torah, against this kind of lessons. And that's what Kalish did. Did that, did that evoke one word of criticism from Rabbi Nissen Kaplan in Eretz Yisrael who knows what's going on in politics in Chicago like I know what's going on in the moon? Did that stop Rabbi Nissen Kaplan from g- giving him a video of a wonderful, lavish endorsement? No. Did it stop any of these other rabbis who endorsed him? That he did this thing from Shkocha? Did they chastise him? Did they put out one word to the tzibur? Me the shasak oidi oidi, the chil Hashem of the silence. Terrible. They were still lauding him and giving him Kadeshim. And after he voted for that bill, Aguda sent a delegation of Haimis. When I mean by Haimis, a bunch of Yidin who know that we do good to see it's country conductors, it's good to see it must be good, we're lobbying. And what did the Kalish do? He took him around to meet a lot of his progressive buddies. See, now in the paper it says, terrible. He got defeated by a progressive. When Kalish was Panya Brown with a lady who introduced the Ritzich abortion bill, and he said, I am a foot soldier in your army. 
and I'm going to work for you. And we got to stop Trump, he said, from, from appointing pro-life judges. That's what he said in the secular Chicago newspapers. Then the Agud, then the Agud or their organ, the Ahmadiyya, then they weren't upset about progressive. When he took all those people, the Jaimes, the Lemichals, who came up in the bus to Springfield, and they all thanked him because he gave them a free lunch, a kosher lunch he arranged for them. But we needed him there to give them a kosher lunch. What would be if Kelish wasn't there and they brought along their sandwiches? I don't know. Maybe if they not rice from Hindu, they would have starved. So he took them around to meet a lot of these low-life politicians who are antithetical and anathema to everything the total Orthodox Jews stand for and pose for smiling pictures. And as, as uh, Dickens said, a good time was had by all. You understand? The same garbage that the New York politicians, that the Haredi politicians do, the Eichensteins and the, and the, and the Rosenthal's and occasionally the Felders, etc. Same garbage has been going on for time memorial. Except they weren't a good lobbyist, only that the, what's his name? Where's Alanga Becker? She says, did you try the Anical? You understand? So this is the article, okay? Now, what else did he accomplish while he was there? We have to find out if he did any bills in favor of gambling there or, to, or anything else. If he had time to, or he still might do it because he has to He has to have his bread buttered for the next thing. So he explains what he's going to do in the next nine months. He doesn't say if he's going to do on gambling or not. Let's check out and see, besides for the nursing homes or for Gelfi Yeshivas, let's see if now he should be unhindered and unencumbered because he's out anyhow. Let's see him speak up in the floor, on the floor of, of that legislature for moral family values and how important that is. Let's see, I challenge. I challenge a good and Rabbi First to gain support and Rabbi Levin and all the rest of the rabbin who supported him and Nissen Kaplan to get him to do a Chuva Samishka of the Rambam and actually speak up for morality instead of working against it. So he here now came to this Ritzich abortion bill. He was under big pressure because by mistake, some of the Heimis in, in, the Heim, in Chicago, Heimitown found out and listen, the Ritzich bill, you know this, which comes up already, <laughs> nobody knows about it, you can get away with it. But Ritzich abortion, that, that still clings by the heads because the Jews are a little bit by Catholics. They don't even understand. They once went to the Vatican, went to the Vatican, not in the church, in an office building. And I met with the person who was the head of the Supreme Court of the Vatican, an American, who was actually, if I may say so, literally a chassid of mine, Cardinal Ber Archbishop Burke, then he became a cardinal. He's the chief person who stands up against the liberal liberalism of the, the current Pope. But then this was a few years ago. And I told him, you know, there's something worse than killing babies. What could be worse, Rabbi? I told him, Godl When you bring a person into licentiousness, it's worse than when you bring a person into to kill the baby. Because killing can only, the Gemara explains, oh, you can only do one time ritzicha. But but if you bring a person into licentiousness, mishkav zacher or adultery or anything else, then you're killing him bezer in olam hazeh ubeba. And frankly, what that means is also there's a chance that he's going to be, become licentious, he's going to become a tome, and his kids, for Darius, might become Tomeim also. So it's actually worse. So now let's chazim over what we learned. Which is worse, voting the wrong way in the abortion bill or voting the wrong way in a licentious bill like this? It could be there's a svara that it's worse on this schmutz. But just like the Catholics, their big Indian is abortion. Some of them, the religious ones, understand the Shkav but in their hierarchy, abortion's worse. Unfortunately, by a lot of frumi yidin, just in their head, a little bit, you know what I mean? Uh, so he's getting away with it because their attitude is, no, it's already Dina, the Malchus of Dina, it's already marriage and everything else. No, see, he did it in the Goyim, the public school, who cares? It's, it's unfortunate. So now we move ahead. Let's see what happens next. Let's see what happens next in this, in this Kiss Up article, this Lekrai article. Mr. Lang himself was one of the three who chose him. I explained to you about the dirty deal. And initially the support. Now listen to this. Listen to how they finesse this garbage. Listen to this yellow journalism, this sheker, half tooth Kule sheker of Rafal Hoffman. Shame on you. He's going to have to give some kind of an accounting to this. It's some, some kind of a tribunal at some point. He's going to have to explain this yellow journalism misleading Klal Yisrael. It's Lifnaiv Leisit and Michel. It's a Samen al Dam Reacha. It's unbelievable. Yet after Mr. Kalish opted to vote present rather than to support a bill that was championed by his party, but which he objected to on moral grounds, the trajectory of the race quickly shifted. Let me explain to you. Rabbi first discovered this, and it was too much for him to be civil. The gay he could be civil, but he couldn't be civil this. So what did he do?
I'm sorry, Rabbi Sai. I'm sorry for the interruption. Let me just go on. So we continue. So what did he do? So what happened is as follows. He was prepared to try to get away with voting proactive for abortion, like he promised, like he committed himself to doing all the papers and everything else. And when he went to Governor Pritzker and that lady and everything else, and Planned Parenthood. No, most rabbi first and others found out about it. And there were some frumies who were complaining. And they realized these, these rabbis, these political rabbis, the domino decadent rabbis, they realized they're not going to be able to fascistic this. They told him, listen, Mark, I don't know if they called him rabbi. Tell me, was Rabbi First and Rabbi Levin calling him Rabbi? Was this and Calvin calling him Rabbi? I don't know if they went that far. He said, listen, here, you can't vote for this. What? He said, what do you mean? I committed this and that. Who knows whether they made negotiations. You're going to have to, okay, we're going to be matter to you to vote present. Present means nishtah he nishtah her. But the, and, and, and therefore, you could straddle a little. So they're going to be unhappy with you, but you didn't vote against, and God forbid, you're not going to speak against. You're not going to say, oh, I represent Skokie. Remember the march in Skokie with the Nazis march many years ago in the 80s? You know why they marched in Skokie? Because at, at the time they claimed it had the largest Holocaust population in a small area. I don't know if that was true in Brooklyn, but it doesn't matter. Skokie. So he could have said, I'm from Skokie, I'm an Orthodox Jew. Our parents, our grandparents are this, or this and that. Holocaust survivors. This is Ritzicha. This is killing innocent pre-born babies or maybe even post-born babies who survived the Sabbath of Washington. He was supposed to have gotten up and make a speech to me with Shemayim. P.S. Democrats didn't vote for one. Six religious Gentile Democrats voted against the bill. But our Orthodox Sabbath voted present. Okay? So he didn't satisfy anybody. Not he was Mekayim the Torah. Not he was Mekayim the Torah. He was Mechal Hashem because the politicians all know he's a gutless wonder. And we control him enough, we have our thumb on him enough that he's not going to stand up and speak out for life, okay? And for his total values of Shefech Tam Odom Ba'odom Dom Yeshafech. It's a posik and it's learned up uh, by Rabbi Yishmol and Sanhedrin and it's passing like that in the Rambam, yeah? And on the other hand, he doesn't satisfy his, 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 his he turned off his Democrats. So Hashem used, if you see the, the Yiddish kind of in the Hafeichu, Hashem used, since you went and made a chil Hashem and you were mevazan me, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you disparaged me and I'm Yisrael and you never retracted. And whatever rabbi told you, you don't have to retract. I'm not going to cobble that without a Torah source and explanation for why he didn't have to retract. So Hashem says, I'll retract for you. You're going to lose and everybody's going to know it's going to be lost for abortion. And the person who has said, is going to think, why did he lose for abortion? Oh, if they check in, they'll hear the story that Levin's telling them now because he committed this and that. Okay. So Hashem took care of that. Hashem. But you see what it says here? It says here because he voted present because it went against his moral convictions. He might have even gotten up and made a speech. Morally, I can't do this. I'm voting present. Is that the extent of your morals? Isn't your morals that you have to vote against the Ritzicha bill? Isn't that what your morals are? I, I, I want you to know something, that Rav Moshe Feinstein of Yaakov Kamenetsky, even when they gave that Rabbi Sherrill watered down, watered down the original statement that was so powerful, it was so milquetoast, it didn't say anything. Way back when Aguda was forced into a situation, like I told you, the Rabbi Sherrill, she told us to stay away from these family things. It was watered down. Oh, only only one case, it says in the book, if the reform and the reform conservative would start to do something, they would start to be pro uh, same gender, uh, opposite lady rabbis, then they would speak out again. If they would, be, if they would start to be for the dust in that context, because the fight against reform conservative was much more important to Rabbi Shera because of personal reasons, maybe having to do with family, whatever it is, I don't know. But that was more important than the fight against morality where he said, live and let live, it's not our business, et cetera, et cetera. And it's Talmidim, 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 Rabbi Zoy Bell and everything else. And now the Josh Melons and everybody else, they, oh, they, they, they have the sheet that they take it to a much further center, Rabbi Shara. That's why we have a Frankenstein, a good created Frankenstein called Rabbi Yechiel Galish. Since he took such pride in voting for that, I call him Galish. Okay? So now let's continue. So you see the false kite here. He wanted to vote for the bill. And his arm was twisted, so he made a pshara. And probably the dirty deal of the implication, another deal. He made a deal with the devil with Lulang, and then the rabbis made a deal with the devil. 
that listen, if you give me such a good boy, like, oh, it's so hard for you. We have to give you such credit for not voting for the abortion bill, for voting president. So he came to that, if you would think he stood up and he was Makadish Hashem. Don't you understand there was a Chil Hashem because all of the, the religious Catholics and all the media looked at him and said, you see what he's doing for bucks and everything else? He's under the finger of these things. You see that? He couldn't even vote. Like everybody knows the Orthodox Jews are hellfire against this stuff. You understand? So it's a Chil Hashem. And for that, they had to give him reendorsements, endorsements again. What about Torah Hilmi Wutzar? How could I go to Rabbi first for a Din Torah, for a Psach Halacha, if I see how craven he is and how feckless he is to insist on the, on the whole situation instead of this kind of a compromise? And I said for a fact, when Moshe of Yaakov were very, very strong in abortion, when Moshe said in the Chuven Am Oilam, the, 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 uh, the, the journal of Agud, the Torah journal, he wrote in the 1970s, he wrote that uh, uh, there are many G'dal Yisrael throughout the Doris who speak about the source of the Isra of abortion. And Reb Moshe writes that abortion for a Jew derives from Leisirzach. He had a very chumradika, chumradika thing. If you know his fights with the Tzitz Eliezer, etc., etc. He's Meridik Makbet on abortion, okay? Meridik. And Reb Moshe wrote a letter that many people are not aware about to, to Miami, to the first, to the Dade County Group Miami in 1978, Lemus Barham. That was the first pro Hashkasa legislation. And he personally wrote a letter on the Goodest Rabbanim Station. He signed to demand that they vote against it. And I got the letter for Moshe in 83, Lemus Barham. I got the letter on the Goodest Rabbanim Station again, not on the Goodest Yisrael. Not on the Goodest Yisrael, Chas Vashon, even though they're a much bigger organization, where Moshe wrote a very strong language. You wrote a very strong language that it's it's a chiv of every all politicians to be in the, present in the ulam and to vote. Get, get this by this, to vote uh, against the bill, not to vote present. So exactly what Kalish did by abortion, where Moshe was mamish very very stark. He said you're not allowed to do by same by the same gender stuff by that stuff. You understand? Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky used to be very supportive of the fact that the Gentiles were making protests uh, against abortion outside the abortion seminary, cemetery, uh, whatever it is, uh, places where they commit abortions. And they and, and at one point they spoke out very strongly about abortions with Benegat to Eretz Yisrael. Anyhow, so you understand this is false what it says. It wasn't he had a moral compass. His moral compass was, I want to do this. It's the law of the land. I'll give you all the quotes. Go look at my Jewish press article where I had the quotes. It's just that he was between a rock and a hard place. So even that's phony garbage, okay? And Lu Lang was furious because they had a deal. That's why Lang was furious. Lang knew he's an Orthodox Jew, but he'll, he said to Mark, Lu, there's not going to be any space between us. You got this, etc. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to run to the Planned Parenthood, and I'm going to say I'm a foot soldier, and I'm going to say all this is a shyness. And then he goes and he betrays. Okay, let's go further. And we keep on referring. Yet if the rabbi Kalish, why can't they call him uh, assembly member Kalish or legislator Kalish? No, they got to stick in the rabbi. You know why? Because we're full Hoffman and Mrs. Ruth Lichtenstein and the whole Hamadiyah Stinkachs is trying to brainwash you. He's coming back. They're bringing it back into society again. He did such a good job. And we're knipping it back. You're a rabbi again. You're Givaldic. We'll pat you on the back. Should be Mux and Makos Mias. For all that you know, he's part of the reason we're in quarantine. Do you know that Rabbi Herschel Shachter, a YU rabbi, in last week's Jewish press, he's quoted by Sandy Ellis in the article basically saying that because of the immorality, because of the immorality. And I was told that Rabbi David Cohen, also not the extreme, extreme right wing of Haredism, he said because of this specific morality, that's one of the main reasons we're quarantined. Rev. David Feinstein said after Hurricane Sandy, I heard it from one of his Talmudim was there in the shir, he gave a shir, maybe it was the Chumash shir, whatever. He said that one of the reasons for Hurricane Sandy, or the main reason, was because of the Kaisum Ksuba Zacha. Okay? And this is what Yechiel Kalish said, Rabbi Kalish. Because I good, they can't admit that they created a Frankenstein. So we have to welcome back and, and, and cover up, et 
etc., etc. I'm sure it's very pleasing by Hashem. It's a good harbinger the way they're going that we're going to come out of this quarantine and it's not going to be business as usual. This is our problem. This is our problem. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, um, now listen to this. During his tenure in law for Rabbi Kalish was instrumental in keeping Democratic Governor Pritzker from following through a campaign promise to defund the Invest in Kids program. Okay, guilt, guilt for yeshivas. Okay, for low-income children. Okay. Okay. It is a major thing. So he got some guilt for the yeshivas. Very good. That's how it always is. As long as you get some guilt for yeshivas, you can, you can do the same thing. The same thing that Eichelstein does, the same thing that Daniel Rosenthal does from Queens, Geferlach. And where are the Queen's rabbis? Where's Rabbi Wetzel? Where's Rabbi Peretz Stamberg? Where's Rabbi Schoenfeld? Yeah, where's the vaunted organization that Rabbi Tesach Lerner has, the American Jewish Coalition for Torah Values, or whatever it's called? Where are they to criticize Rosenthal or Eichmann's anything else? They wouldn't touch with the 10th of Paul. I sent a message to them on various occasions. Please come out and be uh, consistent and condemn this and, 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 and show the Orthodox politicians that it's not half given up. They're chicken. You understand what I'm saying? I'm saying Rabbi Tesach Lerner, Rabbi Merkin, Okay, Rabbi Schoenfeld, Jeff Adlerstein, Zachopkeret, you understand? They're chicken to do it. Too much, it's them too much to send the Fashem. They're Mekayim the Mitzvah of Loisugur of Neish, the Torah Mitzvah, the Valdek. Does that mean they're, they're, they're terrible? No, they're very good in a lot of issues. But on this thing, fat smells. You can smell it through the YouTube. They can be right in there with Hamidia. Okay, so what else did he do? So that's one paragraph of what he did. And for many years, bing, 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 the Israeli, Illinois nursing industry, which is a major employee and source of support for schools and other nonprofits, it means they give tzedakah. And if Kalish wouldn't fight for them, this and that, they're going to stop giving tzedakah. You see how they twist it? If Kalish wouldn't do it, because before Kalish was in as the legislator, legislator, they didn't give such tzedakah. But because Kalish is in, now they are giving tzedakah. And this thing that he employs, they stick in the employer a lot. I'm sure there are 10, 15, 20 people Let's say these even 50 people. If they if they provide panasa, the nursing homes, for 50 people who are not in their mishpacha, literally workers, I'm not talking about an administrator, assistant administrator, but other things that face social worker, this and that, let's say it's 50. And that's probably an exaggeration, all the nursing homes. So because in the district, in the district, probably much less. These nursing homes are probably all over the place. But let's say they're in the district and it's 50. So you put on one side of scale 50, and these people wouldn't have any parnos without that. And that's why we have to turn away, turn the other cheek to, to his immorality on the abortion and on the on the same gender stuff. Right? Is that so? It's Gavaldic. Okay. Okay. Now, in his statement, this is the closing thing, Gravik Kalish continued his plans outlined his plans for the remaining nine months. I will continue to serve my state representative in the 16th district, but my focus will change. He's going to change his focus. I must do everything I can to help the community and industry during this time of crisis and maximize whatever political capital I may have to bring necessary resource to the team with gelt, 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 and industry. In other words, I'm going to continue to work like a faithful little tzutzik and puppet so not so terrible, but let's acknowledge what it is like a lobbyist in waiting to return back to my lucrative lobbying job for the nursing homes. You understand? To help those 50 people, etc., etc., and to help the nursing homes, and if you're able to give money to the stock, if not, it's a, bat, a baseball bat over our head. Let's see if we'll vote for any of the new schmutz bills that might, that might come up in his remaining few months, number one. But he says he's going to change his thing, he's going to change his, his, uh, his focus. What was focused until now? Until now, his focus was to vote for, for, for the, the agenda in the public schools and to vote President abortion. And now he's going to concentrate just in gelt, gelt, gelt. But what does this mean? How about, he should say, I want to do a Chuvus HaMishka over the Ramadan before I get out. If I stand up and I speak out for Torah, family values, which a lot of Christians support, which the country definitely needs, etc., etc., maybe I can retrieve some kind of pen and some kind of kapara because eventually I'm going to have to go up and give a din v'cheshven. And I was just shliach of the tzibur. So the whole charedi tzibur, as the Satma Rebbe said, he said, you can't vote in the Knesset Haminim because if they do something, you're represented because you voted for them. Said Rev. Rafal Bloom of Kashar, the same thing applies, the same thing applies 
Uh, in America also, when you vote for one of these politicians and he makes same gender this or abortion that or anything other immorality assisted suicide, you have a chalik. Okay, you'll never hear that from a good or something like that. You won't hear that from Nissen Kaplan. Reverend Nissen Kaplan is a big tzaddik. He doesn't know what's going on. How do you allow yourself to do it? Like Chavetz Chaim said, Lush and Hora, Tom Terry, and Narada from the Zion, Terry Shem Kim Spessi. So, you know, he gave his endorsement. He said, Hey, yo, he's Rabbi first, and the other Chashuv Rabbonin. So, it's domino decadent rabbis. And we've seen that too often. Where, oh, he's on, I'll sign also. I'm part of him looking, and you know what it's like? It's like an Echshevim. The Sachtis Rabbonin might go down. Oh, the oil is here. They checked out the chemicals. This and that. Okay, but we charge you $500 a month for the heksha. You understand? It's the same kind of garbage in the heksha. the same kind of garbage in the political heksha. But it's very unfortunate. My river, a boy's side. My river, a boy's side. Let me tell, let me tell you straight. If he is accepted back in society, it's business as usual, and he's lauded, and he's bat, pat on the back, and nobody insists that he fix up. Now that he's out anyhow, he could fix up. It might be a little embarrassing for him, but he has a chance to fix up. And they start to rabbi, rabbi this, rabbi that. It remains an indictment, of course, on Hamedi and the Shmekarai and all the other people. You know, they put him on the front page of Yated, and they put him at the time when either Ami or Mishpacha had a whole kiss up, Benjamin Rose had a whole kiss up him. And they could have checked because that week he was doing all this nivel pair with all the different uh, Politico and New York and, and, and Chicago Tribune and sometimes, and they didn't do it. They're all a pile of something that, that if you finish it with it, you have to make Asher but you have to move far away to make the Asher Yatza because it's a halach in terms of the smell. That's what all this Jewish media is. That's what it is. I'm not trying to win. Listen, I'm not trying to win friends and influence people. I don't frankly care if what I say is popular or unpopular. You know what I care? It's a halach in your idea. If there's a pot and it's being pilot, it's pushing out Tom, it can't be by layer, it can't take in the tray for Tom. If I can't persuade anybody else, like the Godel said, at the beginning of my life, I wanted to change society. Then I wanted to change my city. Then I wanted to change my family. And as an old man, I'll be happy if I maintain my values in the Gedolim of yesteryear. And anything else that I get that goes along and shakes their head and says, finally, we have somebody who's still speaking the truth and he's making sense, this should be my schar from what I, uh, from my efforts. That's it. I'm sorry. I'm brusque. You know why? I'm a Levi. I come from the tribe of Levi. And Levi said, as Moshe Rabbeinu said, it was the Levi's that I told them, take a sword, go out against your own family, your fathers, your relatives, your brothers, whatever it is. This is it. This is how it's programmed. And I have the schus. That a Kodesh Baruch who gave me Rabbi Rav the the Milner, the Davidson Rav, the the Kasher Rav, the Sklander Rav, and Moshe Halberstam, and Shmuel Feilson, and many many others that I had shimmers to one degree or another. I've been doing the same thing now. I'm in my forty third year, over four decades, and I don't change, and I'm not interested, and I'm happy that Hashem has given me the ability to do this. And as long as He gives me the Kayak and the ability, I will continue to do it. This is Yehuda Levin. This has been a long preparation, but this is like you know how the Rush Limba has uh, Prager has his Prague University, and Rush Limba has his Institute for Understanding the Conservative Values or whatever he calls this thing. This is Yehuda Levin's Hashkafa 101: How to read between the lines of Jewish media and how not to comfort the people who have done big averus. Until we meet again, spread the word. You can hear my program, my radio program, 11 to 11, each and every week. Thursdays at uh, 11 o'clock till midnight on 6.20 a.m. radio. And you can do it until the YouTube gangsters decide to take me out. You can, you can see this on YouTube. And it's also on my WhatsApp, okay? And my WhatsApp and audio, whatever. And you can see my WhatsApp at 718. 718-469-6999. Until you meet again, I good and Tamid. And the fact that somebody's moicha is megan on the tzibur, it doesn't go down. So Hashem sees that there are a few people who are tzayik, and that itself is a gavaldika chizik for all of Klai Yisrael. Hareini mekavla lai mitzvah sheh shel v'yahavta v'yachla kamoicha. I'm considering yourself as part of this tzibur. Zoychen when it comes to certain mitzvahs and good things, you can be mezakah the people. 
But deep down, just like the halacha of Kaifun Echachim, writes on the Baigitin when appropriate for a get, which is not that often, believe it or not. But uh, the, the Rambam's famous Rambam is saying, because inside the person wants to do the right thing. So that's what this Chazal is saying, except the search to the east of the Yetzirah gets in the way. So I'm Mizaka, all of Kuala Yisrael who wants to make the protest, and either they don't know, they're not involved, they don't understand, they don't have the guts, et cetera, et cetera. But deep down, they want to do the right things. Thank God I was given the job assignment. I know which ice I have in the Sefer Torah. I was given the job assignment, and I'm happy to do it. Until we meet again, a voice are good and tamid. And for those who can, please spread the word and let's make a kiddush Hashem and let's talk a hope that when we come out of this catastrophe very, very soon, there should be refus and yeshus to all of Klai Yisrael and that, that everybody, all of us, should be zeichet to do tshuva, the Karim Mamish.